Hello, this is Mr. Mac. Today, I'd like to talk to you about the normal distribution. Now, you all probably are aware of the normal distribution to some extent. It looks like a curve, something like this. Uh, and it has been called the bell curve, uh, the normal distribution. Um, now, if you have uh, a, a large population of something, let's say, for example, uh, LG makes 100,000 washing machines, and they take a look at how long it takes for these washing machines to break down. Some of them will break down very quickly, but hopefully very few of them. A lot of them, uh, some of them, will take a long time to break down, but there will be kind of a middle time where they really start breaking down with uh, uh, r rapidity. So, in other words, there is some kind of a, a curve, and a lot of things are what we call normally distributed. So the normal distribution would be this curve, and we actually ordinarily put it on an xy axis, actually a zy axis, because when we're talking about the standard normal curve, we use z for the horizontal axis, and then we talk about z scores or standard scores. Now, um, first of all, let's talk about the characteristics of the standard normal curve. The standard normal curve, first of all, is continuous. It's a, 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 a continuous line. There aren't any breaks in it. It is um, bell-shaped. And the mean, mode, and median are all right here at the center of the curve. In other words, in, in the distribution, if it's normally distributed, the mean, mode, and median are all at the same spot. Now, the curve uh, continues on and on forever in both directions, and it gets closer and closer to the x-axis, but it never touches it. Now, I don't really remember if we've talked about this before, but we call that kind of behavior asymptotic behavior. So let me give you that word, A-S-Y-M-P-T-O-T-E, asymptote. An asymptote is a line that the function gets closer and closer to but never actually touches. See, the idea here is as you go out farther and farther, as he gets bigger and bigger to the right or to the left, this curve gets closer and closer to the z-axis, but it never actually touches the z-axis. There's always a tiny bit above it. So the uh, curve asymptotes with the x-axis on both sides. Now, it, even though this curve never actually touches the x-axis, the area of the region under the curve from negative infinity to positive infinity is equal to 1. Now, also, um, it, the z-scores, the units, the units for the z-scores are standard deviation. See, now, one standard deviation to the right would be 1 for z. One standard deviation to the left of the middle would be negative 1, uh, would be a negative 1 z-score. Now, the, the book... Uh, does give you the rule of thumb for the standard normal curve and the standard deviations. Remember, the area under the entire curve from negative infinity to positive infinity is just one. But if you have the standard normal curve, the area from negative one to one under the curve is 0.68. And what that means is we would expect 68% of our data items to fall somewhere between negative 1 standard deviation and positive 1 standard deviation of the mean. Now, between negative 2z and positive 2z, that's two standard deviations each side of the mean, 
there is 95% of the data, 0.95 is the area under the curve. We would expect 95% of the data for a population that is normally distributed to fall within two standard deviations of the mean. And then three standard deviations to the left, negative three, and three standard deviations to the right, positive three. We would expect 99.7, see 0.997 is the area under the standard normal curve between negative three and positive three standard deviations. Now the reason I'm doing this video again is because the book basically gives you that as the total stuff that you're supposed to know, but it's not enough for the end of course exam. There is a chart that will tell you exactly how much area there is between two different z-scores. And on the EOC, they're going to expect you to be able to utilize that chart to find that area. Now, the book does use the TI-84 graphing calculator and tells you what buttons to press to get these kind of areas. But they're not going to let you use that calculator on the end of course exam. So you have to learn how to use the table. Now, I have a copy of the table for each one of you. and. Uh, Either you will have already been given one, or I will give you one when you come to class the next time. But that uh, table actually looks something like this. Here is a, a piece of it. Now it's a little difficult perhaps to read here. But if you look up at the top, let me just make a little pointer here that I can kind of slide around. OK, if you look up at the top here, this is a standard normal curve. And what they're saying is this shaded part here is the area that they're giving us. So notice here is a z-score. And remember, z represents the number of standard deviations above the mean. And so if you wanted to say, for example, I need to know what the area is under the standard normal curve or what percentage of the data will fall from negative infinity to, let's say, 1.2. Well, what you would do is you would go down the side here till you get to 1.2, and then you would say, all right, uh, look up at the top here. We got 0 0.00, 0 0.01, 0 0.02. What we do is we would add these to the ones on the side. So 1.200 would be this number right here. And I'm having a little trouble reading that, but it looks to me like that is um, 0.8849. Um, you'll have your chart before you and you could look on that. Now, if we wanted to know the z-score of 1.21, it would be 0.8869 and uh, 1.22 would be 0.8888888. Anyway, uh, so here you can find the area under the standard normal curve from negative infinity to a z-score to the right of 1. Now, the standard normal curve has symmetry, so you can use these values to find values in other areas also. So let's take a look at a few uh, of the cases that are going to show up. Uh, let's say, for example, we want to know the area under the curve from negative one standard deviation to negative infinity. Now, you don't see that on this, this chart, but since there is symmetry, in this chart, we know that this value right here is really the same as this value up here. And we could get this value, um, here, let's, we could get this value by taking one minus this value here and this value we can get in the chart. Now, the standard DV, uh, the the area under the curve for uh, one is 0.8411. So this region right here has an area of 0.8411, and so this region right here would be one minus 0.8411, which is uh, let's see, that would be nine eight. Um, Five, one, 0.1589? Yeah, I think so. So 0.1589 would be this area, but that would make this area also 0.1589. So you see what you're using there.
is the symmetry of the graph and uh, your uh, and the chart here that that's giving you this. Um, it should be obvious that the area to the right of the mean, the area to the right of the mean, or the area to the left of the mean, is 0.5. So anytime you want to know the uh, area between two values, you could actually find the area. Um, well, let's let's go ahead and take a look at one of those with this too. So um, I'm going to go and erase what we've got here so that we can do another problem with this. So let's say we want to find the probability that a data item is between negative 0.8 and positive 1.1. Okay, so if we were to draw this with standard normal curve, we want from 1.1 down to negative 0.8 and this is the area that we're looking for all right you might if you think you understand you might want to pause the video at this particular point and try to do this on your own i'll pause for just a second then i'll come back and we'll do this problem hi we're back now what we're going to do with this is we're going to split this up into two problems first of all we want to know this area here and then secondly we want to know this area here now if we add these two areas together we'll get the answer to our original problem now this one the second one it seems to me to be a little bit easier to do so maybe we should do that one first see if we look at 1.1 uh, in the chart we get 0.8643 now that's the area from negative infinity over to 1.1, we have 0.8643. And if we subtract 0.5 from that, we get 0.3643. So this one right here has 0.3643 as its area. Now I trust that that one wasn't difficult for you. This one, uh, this may take a little more, okay? Now, what we're going to do is we're going to go to 0.8 this way, and that's going to give us the area from all the way over here to there, and then we're going to subtract 0.5 from that, the area here, and we'll get that one. So for 0.8, I get 0.7881. So all of this has the area 0.7881. Again, I'm using symmetry there. And if I subtract 0.5 from that, I get 0.2881. And that's the area for this little piece here. So finally, to find the area between the two, we add 0.2881 and 0.3643. And I'm sure you'll use a calculator on that, but uh, I don't have one at the moment. So we'll just put a 4 here, put a 2 there, carry the 1, 6, 15, 14, 15. 3 plus 2 is 5 plus 1 is 6. So I get 0.6524. I sure hope that's right, because to put this up online and then be have made a mathematical mistake would be kind of embarrassing. See, now the problem is a lot of times when you have data, though, you don't have the standard normal curve. You have a normal curve, but the mean is something other than zero. As you can tell, folks, if you're not actually in the classroom, I'm doing this during the school day. Um, if if the, the standard normal curve has a mean of zero, and then the z-scores are 1, 2, 3, and negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, which are standard deviations. But a lot of times your population is going to be have different numbers. So you may have to, what we call, standardize these scores before you actually use this chart. So let's take a look at standardizing. scores. Now, remember Z is its units are standard deviations. Now, what that means, uh, standard deviations, what that means is if you have a Z score of 2, that's 2 
standard deviations. If you have a, a z-score of 1.5, that's one and a half standard deviations above the mean. So imagine you have some national test, and let's just say the average on this, oh, okay, first of all, will tell you that the scores on this test are normally distributed, and they tell you that the average on this test is 500 points, and the um, standard deviation for the uh, deviation, uh, the standard deviation uh, for these scores is, uh, oh, 80 points. And they want to know things about what percentage of students got uh, grades between this and that or something like that. Well, now, what you would have to do is you would have to standardize the grade they give you. So imagine, for example, we say, what is the um, percentage of students, in other words, what is the percentage of students who got less than 600 on this uh, test? In other words, what we're looking at here then is this percentage right here, or that area, that since the area of the curve is one, if we get the area, that's the decimal of the percentage. So first of all, we have to standardize the 600. Now, the Z score turns out to be X minus X bar over S. I probably need to explain a few things to you in this. X bar is the symbol that we use to mean the um, estimated average or mean of the population. And S is our estimate of the standard deviation of the population. And usually X bar and S bear with them the connotations of um, we haven't actually polled everybody in the population. We just took a random sample of people in the population and we figured out what we believe the population average is and what we believe the standard deviation is. So this would be the average and the standard deviation of a random sample from the population. See, if we actually had the actual mean of the population, we usually use the Greek letter mu to stand for the population mean, and we use the small Greek letter sigma, it looks something like this, to stand for the population standard deviation. So in this formula, you may see mu where the x bar is, and you may see this little sigma where the s is. In other words, it might look like this, x minus mu over sigma. It's the same thing. In both cases, what we're doing is we're standardizing the score. Now, think about this with me. X minus X bar is how, how far away from the mean your X score is, right? So if, um, in this case, we have a score of 600, it's 100 units away from the mean, 600 minus 500. It's 100 units away from the mean. So x minus x bar is how far the score you're dealing with is away from the mean. Now, what we want to do is we want to standardize the score. So in other words, we want to know how many standard deviations it is away from the mean. So notice, if we take how far x is away from x bar, and we divide by s, mathematically, when you divide by something, we're saying how many of these are in that. So if we would say how many standard deviations are there in this difference from the mean, we get the number of standard deviations that that score is away from the mean. That should make sense to you. So to standardize the score, we take the actual score we've got minus the mean divided by the standard deviation, and we get the number of standard deviations that that score is away from the mean, which is the z-score or the standard score. In this case, 600 minus 500 is 100. Uh, so the z of 600 would be 100 over 80 which becomes 10 eighths or 5 fourths or 1.25. So now our question is, what is the area to the left of 1.25 on the standard normal curve? Now we're going to go back to the, uh, the chart 
And we're looking down at 1.25. Here's 1.2012345. I believe it's this one right there. 1.25, and I get 0.8944. So this whole area here is 0.8944. And so what we would say is 89.44% of the scores on this test fell below the 600. Now, a uh, couple of words of advice about using the standard normal curve or the normal curve. It is important that you not apply the normal curve unless the problem says the data is normally distributed or approximately normally distributed. You, and I, I, I say this to you and I'm a little fearful because who knows, they might just expect you to do that anyway, but truthfully, you should not be applying the normal curve unless you have some reason to believe that your data is normally distributed. Of course, the question comes up, what other distribution is there? Well, there are some others, but basically the only one we really study is the standard normal curve. But truthfully, they should tell you that the data is normally distributed. And that is a tip-off. If they say the data is normally distributed or approximately normally distributed, then you they're telling you to use the standard normal curve and to do this kind of stuff. So then uh, you would uh, it would be a good idea to draw a picture of the, uh, the normal curve and put the mean in the middle, put your score where it belongs, and then let the picture guide you into what you should do to actually get the correct area. Uh, if you do that, if you draw that picture and let the picture guide you, you should not be having trouble getting the answers to these things. All right, so um, I believe that takes care of the standard normal curve. Have fun with this, and uh, we're done.